Uh, India has raised the alarm over a new COVID-19 strain. Authorities say the Delta Plus mutation appears to be more infectious and uh, have declared it a variant of concern. Around 40 cases have already been detected across several states, most in Maharashtra. While the tally is still relatively low, authorities are worried it could erupt into a third infection wave. They've urged states to ramp up testing. India is still battling a persistent outbreak. Daily case numbers have gone up after a slight dip over the past few days. There are nearly 51,000 new infections, taking the total count past 30 million. Let's take a closer look with Professor Atiku Pangetsu from the Yong Yu Lin School of Medicine in NUS. He joins us live. Professor, uh, India has declared this new Delta Plus a strain a concern. Uh, how infectious is it? Yes, I think based on what happened with the Delta variant, I think there is a concern that is maybe more infectious. But to be honest, uh, there is actually no proof uh, to date that is it is actually going to be more infectious and, and spread uh, more rapidly or that it's going to cause more severe disease. It, it really requires a lot more uh, study and surveillance. So, Professor, what's your view then with this Delta variant that some believe to be responsible for India's second wave? Do you think that it could uh, potentially... Uh, or this Delta Plus outbreak could create a new crisis in the country? Yes, of course, potentially it's possible. Uh, but as Jill said earlier, uh, at the moment, there's fairly low prevalence, around 40 cases in three or four states. So once again, it's really uh, early days to predict that it's going to cause a third wave. But if you think back to the Delta uh, variant, it also started slowly and it just exploded after that. So yes, definitely it's a possibility, but uh, my own view at the moment is that it, uh, yes, it's a cause for worry, but uh, not yet uh, a cause for panic. But as, as you mentioned earlier, uh, requiring uh, more testing and close surveillance would be the way to be prepared in case something like that does happen. Oh, but what about uh, our arsenal, the vaccines? Are there concerns that uh, the current uh, vaccine portfolio we have uh, won't be effective against these mutated strains? Yes, that's always the, the, the main worry about when you say it's a variant of concern. Is it more infectious? Is it able to cause more severe disease? Will current vaccines protect? Now, of course, once again, the answer is, is because you know, this is still early days. We really have no data to say whether the, the, the currently used vaccines will be effective. But my own view, what I've seen uh, from the data with, with the other variants, with the other vaccines, uh, I think it's, it's, it's more than likely that the current vaccines will still be effective against the Delta Plus variants. I, I, I don't see anything at the moment that would suggest otherwise. And Professor, what's your take on India's vaccination drive? Why do you think that they are facing so many hurdles? Okay, I think, uh, Steve, there are four main reasons. The most important one is obviously simply insufficient supply of the vaccine. Uh, I think maybe poor planning, lack of anticipation uh, on the part of the government resulted in shortages. That is probably the most important factor. Secondly, there are logistic issues around the fact that the public health infrastructure uh, is not adequate to deliver these vaccines. Uh, they're relying almost solely on the public sector. Perhaps the, the private sector could have been involved in delivering the vaccine. So that's the second one, logistic issue. The third one is I think there's still a level of uh, vaccine hesitancy amongst the population. People not really willing to, to accept the vaccine. And finally, another important point is inequity. Okay, uh, The vaccines delivered so far has been mainly given to people living in the urban areas, uh, 1.7 times more given in the urban areas um, compared to the villages, where actually 60% of the population actually live. So those are the four uh, main uh, challenges. All right, many thanks for sharing your thoughts with us this evening. Professor Tiki Pangetsu from NUS.